Hello everybody. Um, those of you who've been watching my progress on this wonderful computer file venture will know we've been developing two themes so far. I've been doing some historical stuff that I know about in person and also going into some aspects of coding, information theory, compression, things like that. I think many of you realise that um, Although Brady started this whole game off with his many, many channels, things like number file, periodic videos and so on, he's such a busy guy, there's no way in the world that uh, his response to the request for many of you, why can't we have a computer file, there's no way he could have done all that as well with what he's got on. So, um, delighted I am that uh, Sean here, a colleague of Brady's, known each other for many, many years, has been able to come in and just basically do so much work so quickly on computer file with me and with lots of other people as you know we do welcome comments we do read them very carefully indeed we probably can't respond to all of them let alone actually take you up on all of them for various reasons but it's lovely to have them and as you'll see they do guide quite a bit about the direction in which we steer this kind of effort as part of the way we operate, it's also obvious, I'm sure, that this stuff is not heavily scripted. We have a vague idea of what we're going to talk about, but not down to the last word. We're not in the business of doing smooth uh, Discovery Channel, National Geographic type stuff lasting an hour. And in many ways, with those kind of operations, you can get good things, but it's all a bit smooth and slick sometimes. We like to go for spontaneity and informality. The result of that, though, is that occasionally you will find we either forget things or make mistakes or generally foul up one way or another. Sometimes, usually, unintentionally. And the first thing I must say on that front straight away, and Sean's grinning as well, is no, I meant no disrespect to Richard Stallman whatsoever at the end of the mainframes and Unix video. I was talking about the huge amount of work that had to go on to convert Unix utilities as well as create a kernel that wasn't directly ripped off from Bell Labs source code. And as I was saying that, I was thinking of all the stuff that goes around Unix that had to be redone, re-engineered. And in particular, if I had to say one big thank you to Richard Stallman and the GNU operation, it will be for GCC. Because without a C compiler that you can freely use and able to cross-compile to just about any architecture in the world, it would seem, then you're going to get nowhere with porting Unix. So yeah, the... Um, the omission of Richard Stallman's name was not intentional. I was thinking of him, actually, as I spoke. I was tempted for a while, and many of my friends told me to try this on with you, but maybe not, that, of course, the reason I didn't mention GNU was because the title of the video was From Mainframes to Unix, and as we all know, GNU stands for GNU's Not Unix. But nevertheless, all joking aside, it has been very much of a kind of collaborative effort and one of the great strengths, I think, of Unix, Unix-like systems of all varieties now is you can pretty well pick the one that suits you. It has, in a sense, become a commodity. I mean, I'm sitting here next to an OpenSUSE system on my far right and I chose that really because the rest of the department here uses it and a few years ago that choice just would not have been open to me. I would have been much more constrained in what I could choose. So I think all of that does need to be said. From the point of view of listening again, yes, Sean, Brady, I've listened loud and clear that many of you nevertheless would like the story from, shall we say, the late 80s, early 90s onwards to be picked up and told by somebody who knows far more about it than I do. Yeah, Unix, FreeBSD, Linux, Minix, GNU, the whole story. There is a lot to say, but I don't think I'm the person to say it. I just don't know quite enough about it. 